Hello everyone, I am Dr. Yusuf Ali Tiyagi, the orthopedic faculty for Allen. Next, today we are going to have a discussion on the uh, clinical condition which is very commonly misdiagnosed and that is early osteonecrosis head of the femur. So, how the patient came to us recently was that he had a buttock pain for the last 7 months which was radiating to the left lower limb. He also had a history on asked with the leading questions. He had a history of occasional limping which was related to work and the knee pain which was again more on or uh, with the relative activities. Now, for the last few weeks, for all those complaints, he took medicines, he went for the diagnostic x-rays, he went for the physiotherapy, he went for the, he took the medicines also, but he was never benefited out of all those conservative methods. That is the reason why examination, that means to touch the patient is extremely necessary, it is extremely important in order to gain the real or the correct diagnosis. And what eventually was found is, because he had a kind of a history which was relating him to be suffering from the low back ache with the possible nerve compression. So, SLR, SLR was done and it was found to be normal. The active as well as passive SLR was found to be 90 degrees. The knee reflexes, ankle reflexes, no abnormality. The plantar were found to be flexor and the power, both extensor as well as flexors, which are very commonly affected in the lower lumbar vertebral nerve compression, were found to be normal. That means everything was normal as far as examination of the lower end of the spine is concerned or the vertebrae is concerned. So, this led us to examine the hip joint also. But in the hip joint, ASIS were equal. That means... In the level of the ASIS, there was no discrepancy, there was no shortening of the limb, there was no wasting of the limb and there was no abduction or adduction deformity because ASIS were found to be equal, they were found to be at the same level. But when we assess the movement of the hip joint, you know, classically on the right side, the internal rotation as well as abduction of the hip joint was found to be painfully restricted in comparison to the left lower limb. And this led us to a conclusion that we should go for the x-ray of the pelvis including both hip. Now, on x-ray of the pelvis including both hip, what we found is that there was relative sclerosis which was present in the head of the femur. Although the joint space was found to be relatively normal, the sphericity of the head of the femur was absolutely normal. It was also not affected. But it gave us an impression that we should go with the sophisticated investigation in order to find out that possibly there could be a possibility of that the patient could be suffering from <coughs> osteonecrosis head of the femur. Although there was no history of alcoholism, there was no history of smoking, there was no history of taking up the steroids because of any other illness, because of any other condition, there was no history which is relating him to any metabolic or systemic disorder. So, the patient was absolutely fine as far as history was concerned, just a kind of a person who was involved in too much of the work. So, what we went for? We went for the MRI and in the MRI, what we found is that there were sclerotic changes, avascular changes in the articular weight-bearing surface of the head of the femur and according to ficket arle system of classification, it was found to be in stage 2 where the femoral head has normal sphericity but there are signs of bone remodeling such as cystic and osteosclerotic regions or the lesions which are clearly observed over here and we concluded that the patient is suffering from osteonecrosis head of the femur in the stage of ficket arle type 2, all right, type 2A because of the no loss of sphericity. So, it was type 2A. Now, once there is no loss of sphericity and the patient is young, the patient is, uh, the disease is in, is in the early stage, the patient is working, a working kind of a male and he is having a spherical head. So, better go for the method in order to salvage the head of the femur with the hope that the head of the femur is going to be saved. So, for that, as far as the plan related to the management was concerned, we switched on to the salvage procedures. Now, in that salvage procedure, what we went for? We went for core decompression with the strut fibula grafting. That was the procedure we opted for. So, after harvesting the fibula, after preparing the fibula, then we went for the core decompression procedures. After decompressing the head of the femur and creating a space for this fibula to get incorporated inside the head of the femur, we advanced the fibula into the head of the femur with the hope 
that the patient is going to be relieved after some duration of time and hopefully the head of the femur is going to be saved hopefully the patient might not go for the total hip replacement in the near future hope with the hope that the patient would be able to work with this preserved head of the femur for many many years to come all right so what are the catch points over here what are the lessons which are required to be learned always listen to the patient always try to touch the patient then only you will be able to get the way in order to make the correct diagnosis because correct diagnosis is must and to diagnose it correctly examination is must all right don't just by listening the patient go with the investigations blindly and second is earlier the diagnosis obviously is going to have the better outcome so hopefully this to some extent would be of help in order for you to learn related to how to manage the patient in your future Thank you so much.